Today we're entering into the gassy world of Russian sanctions. For a while there, it sort of felt like the world was going to try and quit Russian gas cold turkey. Alright, this is the last pipeful that I'm going to take. Then when it was clear we couldn't quit, we tried to just find another dealer. Maybe get Saudi Arabia on the phone. Pfft, they aren't conducting any invasions of sovereign countries right now. No Yemen doesn't count, we're on their side for that one. Don't really like to bring it up too much. Now Saudi Arabia, well they told us to mind our own business and wouldn't produce additional gas. So now we're in this weird place where the world is definitely, definitely, definitely opposed to Russian gas, but you know what we hate more than that, high gas prices. So this puts Europe and other Russian customers in this pretty strange and inconvenient location where you don't want to be seen buying Russian gas, but you know we need our fix. Just pull around and drop it off out back. Now this brings us to today, where Joe Biden is trying to set up a sort of clash of titans. You see you got the OPEC petroleum cartels over here versus the western finance cartels over here. That's right, we'll see your hotel and raise you one. Basically, congrats on all the oil. It would be a shame if no one could pay for it. President Biden is leading an effort to manipulate the oil market at a scale the world has rarely seen, embracing cartel-like tactics in an aggressive but risky attempt to undermine Russia's war effort in Ukraine. The goal? Pretty simple. Abandon the strategy of rallying our lunch table to stop buying Russian gas because, you know, everyone's economies are sputtering right now, don't want to take the remaining fuel out of their tanks, and instead let everyone buy as much Russian gas as they want, but cap the price Russia can charge them. Now you could go on a crude oil shopping spree and Russia won't be collecting too much profit on top of that because you're setting the price at just above the cost they have to pay to extract that gas. Brilliant. Only one problem. How do we get this country that we currently can't control to act against their best interests in a way that we want them to? So you're telling me I can sell my product at an artificially lowered price set by you. <laughs> where do I sign up? Now this is where we get into inverse OPEC territory. For example, maybe the organization of petroleum importing countries. Now the point of leverage that America really has here is its stranglehold on finance and insurance. The current way things work is, if you're a country that wants to buy oil from Russia, time to dig out that old suitcase of cash and meet your contact. The major problem Russia is facing right now is getting paid, literally moving money from the buying party to the selling party. You see, if you want to buy Russian oil right now, you can place the order just fine. But when it comes to the payment screen, America's providing goal line defense. Wiring funds, boom, no. Credit card, not in my house. You're down to either cash or crypto. Now there have been two primary ways that Russia has been getting paid for their gas. First, somewhat predictably, well, the West has written out some exceptions for their Russian oil and gas payments. You see, it's kind of like, all right, India, Sri Lanka, you can't wire money to Russia because we're all a united front. We as the Western countries can though because, well, we got an open tab with those guys. They've been a supplier for centuries and they got our card on the file already. The way Russia deals with the majority of the world though is sort of pizza parlor rules, cash on delivery. Now this cash only system has led to some super awkward situations, like the one I recently covered in my Sri Lanka episode, where the delivery showed up in full and well, no one had the cash to pay for it. I can't leave until you pay me, I'm just going to circle around the neighborhood for a while while you get everything figured out. It's not a great system, something Russia would probably want to avoid. So the new pitch from Biden in the West is, tell you what Putin, we'll let you collect payments using our financial services. In exchange though, we get to control the prices. 
Now, the novel approach developed by Americans and embraced in principle by the G7 leaders last week is to use Western dominance of financial services as a source of leverage against Russia. The idea is that financing and insuring Russian crude oil shipments would only be legal if the oil is sold at a level that is slightly profitable for Russia. See, everyone gets their oil and Russia doesn't get much profit. It's a real win eh, situation. If you hit that optimal price where Russia is making enough money to be willing to abandon cash payments though, well, you're really a genius. Now Yellen, she's the biggest defender of this approach, saying it's the last best way to avoid a global recession. Of course, not everyone is fully on board with this program. Enter the other side of the coin, the side we're trying to bend right now into submission. See, Putin needs money, and it's clear that this cash for oil system he's set up isn't moving the needle enough. The implementation of this plan really relies on Putin taking an incredibly economist perspective of the issue at hand. Oh, so you're going to permit me to get paid this much for my oil? Well, that's certainly going to make sales a lot simpler. This whole thing makes a lot of economic sense on paper. Now keep sending weapons to the people I'm fighting and sanctioning my economy back to the stone age. Instead, spectators are concerned that he might maybe not take all this too well. Maybe more specifically, acting in a way that American economists would consider not in his best financial interests. You see, the most obvious and likely risk with a price cap is that Russia, well, they might choose not to participate in the system at all, and instead retaliate by reducing their overall exports. A Russia selling less overall oil is going to be very painful to the West, more painful than the status quo. We need that oil. At the same time though, it's also going to be way more painful for Russia. They need those sales. If Russia cut back oil supply by 3 million barrels per day in retaliation, prices would jump to $190 a barrel. In the extreme scenario, when we love extremes over here, of cutting by 5 million barrels, well, the world be, would be looking at a $380 per barrel spike. At that point, your car is doubling in value when you fill the tank. Now, there's one other pretty realistic concern to be thinking about here. When it comes to this plan, what if all the other players just largely say, eh, this is sort of dumb, I'm going to keep paying cash for oil, or on the other hand, Russia says, alright, wire us money for the oil, but remember to tip your driver. The main basis for why Westerners think Putin might not take this approach is two ways of transporting gas, pipes or vehicles. Pipes, they're easy, but getting cash payments on those pipe shipments, a bit more complicated. No point of sales. Also, your only customers are people who have pipes leading to them. And most of those pipes, well, they point to Europe. Putin's building a few to China, but not much is going on right now or tomorrow. For other sales, you need vehicles. Problem here, the majority of the natural gas carrying vehicles belong to shippers that are either controlled by western powers, don't want to be sanctioned by western powers, or simply can't get insurance and other business standard accommodations so they don't want to carry that oil. Basically you want to run this as a cash only operation, well you're not going to be dealing with the A team here. Alright man, we're putting the team back together. Guy who blocked the Suez Canal, what have you been up to lately? Exxon Valdez captain, we're pulling you out of retirement for one last job. Now the hope here is this D team lineup is going to dissuade Russia from continuing to pursue less legitimate shipping methods, and instead get them to stick with the established shippers even if it requires sacrificing a little bit of the profit on oil sales. Russian energy importers like China, India, and Turkey might decline to participate, which people are finding alarming, instead finding workarounds to western shipping companies and the financing networks that have support them. But as I just mentioned, American officials, well we're going all in on betting that these countries would prefer to avail themselves of western shipping and prefer cheaper oil anyways. So there you go, 
America and its friends are trying to lock their arms together and leverage their global powers and of course strong arm Russia into selling their oil at reduced rates, ensuring that they can't maybe fully fund their invasion of Ukraine while at the same time avoiding a global gas shortage. Certainly a long shot, but hey, there's a plan. Might work. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. And if you want to support nonpartisan independent news looking at the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.